Welcome to your D121 computer graphics to our exercise where we're going to be creating a wine bottle or recreating a wine bottle from an image that we're going to trace and try to match up the gradients and the highlights and then we're going to put a label on and do some design for that so I just wanted to show you this since I've been out all week and we're doing this at home I wanted to show an example we did in Gravit in the past. Now we're not going to do this in Gravit, but it worked out okay in Gravit. This is a finished example. This is vector. So this is all vector artwork from the original. And eventually we'll put a label on here, but it involves some gradients and involves some overlapping shapes, even some blurs and things like that to get it to look smooth. This is all gradients up here that we're able to match from an original image. And I started doing it in Figma because I was hoping we could do this in Figma, and so far it's okay. This is just the start. I didn't do a whole lot yet, but I created the shape. I put some gradients in there. I had to put some extra shapes in here to get a little more of the highlight. This is just a circle that we can blur if you need to do anything like that to kind of build up the inside a little bit. But so far it's coming out good. I didn't put the, the indent down here at the bottom. I put a little shape here in the middle to kind of help with the gradient in there so we have that kind of dark part here. Now this is the original that we're going from, so I kind of put that in there, and that looks okay. I didn't do the top yet, but I did practice with the gradient, and that'll work out okay, because we're just going to sample the colors from here. So we could put it right over top and use an eyedropper and sample the colors and make a nice looking gradient, so we have kind of a top like that. Now again, I didn't make a nice top yet, but we're going to make the bottle shape first, then we're going to make some gradients, then we may have to accent them, and then we're going to put on some highlights like this one here and this one here. We'll just make little vector shapes to make the highlights. And then eventually we'll make a glass and we'll put a label on the bottle to make it as realistic as possible. So what you're gonna get to start with is you're gonna get a Figma file that'll have this in. This is the original image and we could put the opacity down to start and kind of trace over it. We're actually gonna make shapes with round cornered rectangles and kind of build up so everything's symmetrical and then just kind of make rectangles. Instead of tracing the whole bottle and worrying about getting it straight, We'll do it with kind of closed shapes and kind of uniting shapes. One odd thing about Figma, I noticed that if you make a shape and it just has a stroke and no fill, it doesn't really unite properly. They have to have a fill and no stroke. So I'll go over that, but that's what we're going to be working on next. So I'll show you how to get the link and get started on it coming up. Okay, to get started with this, you're going to go to Unit 8. You're going to find Wine Bottle Figma and click on the shared link. And that should be in a view only mode if you're logged into your account. Otherwise, it'll ask you to log into your account. And if, if it says view only, just go here and duplicate to your drafts and then open it. And that'll now be in your account. And you could double click on the name and just replace last F and copy with your name first initial. So I'll just put mine there. And I'll hit enter. I'll close this up. Now what you're going to see first inside of the letter frame it's just wine bottles it's an image i did not lock it but eventually you'll lock it when we trace over it and you'll unlock it because you're going to want to see the colors when we make a gradient so you may be locking it and unlocking it at some point but for now we could probably keep it unlocked so that we can turn down the opacity if we go if we go to image wherever image is let's click on this again there it has image and go in between here and put the opacity down to about 50% or so so that we can see everything. Now we're not going to be tracing necessarily with a pen. We're going to be making some shapes, but we still want to be able to see through it somewhat. So I'm going to turn down the opacity. We'll turn that up later. And now I'll lock it. And what I'll do is I'll zoom in. Now you can use either one. You can use the red one. You could use the white one. I'm going to use the red one. I've always used that in the past, so I'll use that. Although maybe I should use the other one. Uh, since I, I haven't used that, maybe I should use this one. Maybe I will um, do something different on this one. But what I'll do is I'll just kind of draw a shape. We'll draw one shape for this part, one shape for this part, and we'll join them together. We'll just use rounded rectangles. Now, you can see at the bottom, this is rounded a little bit, so we might bend it a little bit at the bottom. So we're going to get the outline shape first, then we'll do the neck, which obviously is just kind of straight rectangles. We'll make another rectangle, which comes out. And what we'll do is we'll put this shape over top of the other one so we'll make a foil that'll go over top of it and we'll use an intersect so whatever shape we have for the entire bottle we'll just make an intersect and then we'll put this label on top of it so i'll start with this i guess i guess i'll use the white wine since i've never done that before and i'll just start with a rectangle and i'll go as high as i can and you could zoom in i guess a little bit i need to use my uh, trackpad to zoom a little bit better but I'll stay where it's straight and I'll go down here 
Now you can see you want to make it transparent when you start to trace it so you could get rid of the fill and give it a stroke. And remember to stretch it, you don't have to be on one of these corners, you could just stretch it down here. But what, what I am going to do is go to this little white dot here. And if you don't see it, you might have to zoom in a little more if you're not seeing those dots. And I'll even zoom in more at the bottom. And I'll hover over here and bring in the radius. That'll make a round cornered rectangle. Now it won't be perfect, so I'll get it close. And then we'll kind of adjust that a little bit. So I'll get it close. And I'm not worried about the top yet because we're going to make another shape up here. So I'm going to do that first and then I'll hit enter. And now when I did that, it went into editing mode. Now I could actually just hit done. And what I could also do is right click on this and flatten. That'll get rid of the ability to make it round cornered anymore. So it'll just have regular anchor points so that when you go into here, you'll see the anchor points here. Now you could you could go here and, you know, move that up a little. You could go here, move that up a little and make sure you're just moving the anchor point. I'll move that up just a little bit. And you could even go here and add a point. Now, again, when you add a point and you're on this arrow, it looks like it's going to add a point. Make sure you do it slowly. Click slow. It seems like if you do it fast, it goes away. And then I'm just going to bend it out a little bit, bend it down so it's pointy. And then I could go in this bend tool and then just kind of go sideways and just kind of stretch it out a little, stretch out the handles as far as I can. And that looks pretty good. Try to keep it as straight. If you want to hold shift, it'll keep the, the handles fairly straight. And that looks pretty good. You could delete these anchor points, by the way. And the reason it just did that, because I'm still in the bend tool. So I'm going to undo that. Don't do anything else while you're on this bend uh, feature. So go back here. If you wanted to get rid of an anchor point and select it, so it's highlighted like that, you have to do shift delete to get rid of it. And I'll go here and do shift delete. Now I just have the one anchor point and I could kind of move that up. I'll use my arrow, just kind of move it up. And that doesn't look too bad. I'll go down a little. That's pretty good. You can mess with the handles a little bit, but that's pretty good for the bottom of a bottle. So that's good. So we're done. We're done with that part. And then we're going to do the top part, meaning here, the shoulders of the bottle. So I'm going to draw another one and I'll kind of draw it right over the other one. And of course it comes up gray first. So I'm going to subtract the fill and add a stroke so I can see what I'm doing and hover over here and get those corners. Now I'm looking for this corner radius like that. Now that looks pretty good actually. For the most part, we're going to have to do the neck, but I, I do want it longer. So down here, you have to be careful. I want to stretch this out so this goes down further and it overlaps. And I want to make sure it overlaps perfectly. So one way to do that is check the width of this. This says 163. The other one says, this one says 164. So let's make this one 164 because one pixel will matter. So we'll make it 164. And then if we want to align them, you could highlight them and use that. So they align on center and that looks pretty good. Now here's the, the weird thing. If you wanted to join these and you went here to union, you'd think they just overlap and get rid of the overlapping lines, but it doesn't, it, it does some weird thing with the lines. So what you have to do, if you want to join them together as one shape is highlight them and get rid of the stroke and add a fill. Now I don't know why it does that, why it has to have a fill and no stroke, but it treats the stroke as like another element. So then if you go to union, it'll make them become one shape. And then you could put the stroke back on and take the fill off so you can kind of see what you're doing here. So that's the shape. But in order to make a union, you have to give it a fill. That's just the way it works in Figma. And what we're gonna do next is kind of do the top of the bottle here I'll just make another rectangle. Now this doesn't have to be perfect and we'll also kind of adjust the connector parts there. So I'm going to just make that a little wider and again so I could see it, put it on the stroke, take away the fill and I'll make it as wide as I can. Now we'll align this so they're all aligned and we could bend that up so it's kind of rounder up there and I don't think I have to round anything off. You could round it a little maybe if you zoom in 
you go up here and round it off just a little bit like that it's probably all you need you don't want it sharp on the top and that looks pretty good and then you could highlight all of these all three and align them and they should be pretty much on center so that looks good and we want to just round off the top a little and that should be it so let's select just that and what I like to do is flatten the rectangle first so it gets rid of this feature where it has the little round corner on there so I'm gonna right click on this and choose flatten and now when you go into this edit mode you'll see the anchor points and I'll add an anchor point I'll just hover over here and click and do it slowly click slowly so it stays and then just move it up and you can see it's pointy to start and then if you use this bend just kind of drag out hold shift so it goes straight kind of like that that should be it and go back to your arrow and I'm gonna select that anchor point and do shift delete see how that looks and select this one just like we did on the bottom select that one and do shift delete and that's pretty good so that's all I want and I'm not worried about these here because we're gonna unite that I mean we could add an anchor point and add an anchor point we could try to you know adjust this shape if we want matter of fact I, I wasn't planning on doing that but we certainly can instead of adding a different shape let's try to do that so I'll add an anchor point maybe right about here slowly and then when this comes out hold escape or click escape and then go over here and you kind of line it up so they're kind of directly across from each other and then click so now you have those extra anchor points and if this stays like that just hit escape and what you could do now is go back on your arrow and just use one of these grab one of these and bring it over here like that and bring this one over like that now they're not perfect yet and you might be able to bend it in let me try to just go right here and bend it in and actually that works pretty well and I'll go over here and just bend it in now notice there's no anchor point yet you're just going right on the segment and you're just bending it in and it's kind of pulling in handles from the other points so I'll kind of do that to start and if it's not perfect go back on the arrow and then I'll just move this point there a little bit so it kind of now if you move the whole shape just undo it make sure you grab the point and I'll pull that so it flares out a little now this isn't perfectly symmetrical I don't know I'm trying to do it as best I can it may not be you know you could always chop this thing in half and connect the two halves together that's always a way to make things symmetrical but that looks pretty good I think we're gonna get a decent enough bottle from that so I'm gonna hit done and what we could do before we even join all this stuff together as long as we're working on the neck here I'm gonna go and make another shape here and I'll just make a little rectangle and I'll make it come out a little bit and I'll add a stroke and take away the fill so I see what I'm doing and I'll stretch it out just slightly and I could I could highlight all my shapes I could uh, well I'm in edit mode so I don't want to do that quite yet but that actually looks pretty good and if I zoom in even more I might want to round this off a little something like that and I might go on my bend tool now this is the rectangle so I don't want to do any edits yet what I want to do is right click flatten and then I want to go in here and edit and take my bend tool and maybe just bend this line up if you see that little bend thing you could kind of bend it up just slightly and then go down here on the line when you see that little bend icon and bend it up slightly that's all you should need just a little bit and then that's perfect hit done and now I'll zoom out and what you might want to do uh, for the future is but when we do the gradient you might want to save this shape so I might want to do this I might want to just copy this I'll just hold down alt or option and oh, that didn't work um, let me select this again let me hold alt and when you get that double arrow then I'll just move it over there I might need this again uh, to put a separate gradient on it so I'm gonna copy that and then I'll zoom out 
and I'll highlight all these shapes again. And remember, there's the ones we joined already, and then there's uh, these three shapes here, the, the one, well, actually two. So there's three all together, the big bottle shape, the neck, and this little extra thing we did here. You could center them, make sure they're all centered, and then highlight them again. And remember what we have to do? We have to take away the stroke, add a fill, and then we'll do the Unite. We'll do Union. For some reason it doesn't look right. <laughs> that thing doesn't look right. Let me undo that before I Unite them. Um, I centered them. Let me just center this again. Oh, I guess this thing is probably a little off. Maybe that thing because of the way I pulled them out. So I'll just manually move that over a little. Not a big deal, but I, I noticed the difference. So let me do that. I think this thing might have got off just a slightly because of the points I pulled down there. So as long as that looks okay. Now I'll, I'll highlight all three things here and I'll do the union again. And that should be fine. Looks okay. So we have our silhouette of the bottle. I'll take away the fill, I'll add a stroke. So I see my bottle there. And I have this extra thing here in case I need to do it up here. And what we'll start next is start working on the gradient. Now, before I do anything else, this rectangle up here, uh, I'll just call it, uh, you know, top bottle. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet. Uh, top bottle ridge or something. Not sure what that is yet. And then the bottle itself, instead of calling it union, I'll just double click it, click on it, and call it bottle shape. And it's, you know, kind of main. You could, you could put spaces in there, it doesn't matter. And then what I'll do is I'll start with a gradient. Now, uh, what we're going to have to do is kind of move this to the side so you can see things a little bit better. Now, you can move your whole shape over or I can move the bottle over. So I'm going to unlock this and take this shape and make sure I'm on the wine bottle and change the image to 100%. And then I'm just going to move it over. I'll hold shift and use my arrow and just move it over so I can kind of see that. Now, actually, if, if this end here is a problem, because I actually want to have that right next to it. You know, if you're using the red one, you can move the red one over to the right and it won't be a problem. But I have this little piece here. Uh, if I'd actually not want to see this uh, kind of dark bottle here, I could go to fill, go to image, and they have an option here for crop. So I'll just kind of crop that. So I don't see that anymore. I don't want to crop my real bottle, but I'll just crop that and hit enter. And that way I can move this over and I can see my shape here because I want to be looking and even sampling the gradients that are here uh, for my bottle shape. And then I, I guess I could lock this. So I, I don't need to have it active, but I did one at 100%. And I may move it around when I go to work on the gradient. So let's just start with a gradient to start and then, then we'll, we'll take a break. Uh, as we work on different pieces of this, but I just want the main gradient. Uh, the kind of looks pretty good here. Now it won't be perfect, but I'm just going to go here and I'll add a fill and I'll click on the color swatch and I'll use a radial gradient. That's what I've used in the past. And this one here, I'll click on. Now that's getting that gray color. I'm actually going to take my eyedropper and go right here and pick up that yellow. And then when I go to this color, I'm going to take my eyedropper and pick up this kind of dark color like that. Now, it's not perfect yet, but it it's, doesn't look bad. Uh, you could kind of move this up a little bit so it's a little lighter in here. Now, we're not getting the dark around the edge, uh, which you, you could move this down. Again, it's not going to be perfect, but that's why we're going to work on a little bit. So I actually might make it darker, even though you're saying, well, you might be looking and thinking, oh, it's brighter up there. We could probably adjust that and do that extra shape like I did on the other one. But I do want it dark in here. We actually might have to make another little shape in here to kind of get a better gradient in here. But that looks pretty good. You could make this kind of come out a little wider or, or not. And that doesn't look too bad. So that's getting the color. Once we put highlights on here and things like that, it's going to look realistic. And we want to get the top a little bit better up here. So what I'll do to get the top, I mean, that looks pretty good, um, is actually I just want this shape here. Now, we're going to put this foil over top 
of, of that. So what I'm actually going to do, if you watch this, I'm going to make a copy of this bottle. Just temporarily make a copy. So I'll just go hold Option and just make a, a copy of this bottle. I'll move it over here. And what I want to do is just kind of get a middle portion. Now, let me zoom out so you can see what I'm talking about. I just want to get like this portion. Let me zoom in more. I want to get like this portion right here. And I might want to make a little shape to put over top of it. So I'm going to use this bottle. So let me kind of look at all three here. And I'm going to draw a rectangle that kind of goes above here, above the foil. And I don't want it going into the other bottle. So I'll kind of do something like that. I'll move it over a little bit if I can. And I'll bring it up to about here. And you might be thinking, what, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm making a little shape in here so we can have kind of that, uh, this in here so we can have a separate gradient from the bottle gradient. And it'll help things a little bit. So now I have this rectangle and I'll hold shift. I'll hold the bottle shape. And I'm going to do intersect. And let's hope that this works without them being fills. And that worked. That's what I want. And I'm just going to put something like this in here. Now you can even bring it in a little slightly. Just slightly. That's all you need. And you can mess with the anchor points and you know bring the anchor points down or whatever you need to do. Squash it a little bit. So this intersect here. Now you notice I'm not seeing anchor points and I'm not seeing an option to edit the anchor points. That's because when I made the intersection I didn't flatten it yet. So I should go here and flatten the selection. Now it's flattened. Now I could put it down here and I could put above bottle shape. Even bottle shape I think I have to flatten it because I have other things in here. Uh, bottle shape I should flatten the whole bottle shape as well. So I didn't do that yet and I'll just go on the bottle shape, right click and flatten. So it just becomes one shape. Uh, I should have done that earlier but that's okay. Now here if I want to edit the anchor points at all I'm on the wrong thing. I'll hit done. I want to go on this thing. It's called intersect. I'll call it uh, bottle shoulders. I guess that's the best thing I can do right now. I'll call it bottle shoulders because that's what we're kind of looking at here. And that way when I hit edit I could go in here and I could kind of pull this out a little. I could pull this out a little. Kind of tweak it a little bit if you need to you know move this. It'll let you move it a little bit I think. Move that in a little. And that should be okay. And then I'm going to use my bend tool and I'm going to go down here and I'll bend it up to get something like that. So we kind of get that, uh, that dark kind of outline on there. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'll hit done. What I want to do is use the same, grady, the same radial gradient on here. Now I think it already has one. Let me see if it already has it. Uh, oh, it already does have it. But they have a way you can actually save a style and use it again. But actually, since this is here, I'll kind of do this. Let's see if it's editable. Let me get on this shape. The bottle shoulders. I'll click on the gradient here. And move this up here. and move this up in here. So just that thing, even turn it sideways. And I'm kind of looking for something like this. So I kind of have that dark shape in there. Now I don't know how well this is going to work, but I, I want that dark shape in there. And I'll shorten this a little. Something like that I think is going to be okay. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I think I'm okay. And I'll take the stroke off of there. Or actually, I took the fill off. Let me undo that. Let me take the stroke off. And it's something like that. Now, one thing we could also do here, which is pretty cool, is I could go on this, and I could go to Effects. And they have, under Drop Shadow, they have Layer Blur. I could go to layer blur and it'll actually blur it a little bit. And if I go in the settings, I could blur it a little more. 
So I don't want to blur two more because it's going to blur outside the lines. But I'll just blur it a little so now it, it's a little more subtle. And that looks okay. And it's kind of like that. But what we could do is just make a circle, take an ellipse, and we'll make a nice big ellipse like, like that. And for color, I'll go over here to fill. I'll take my eyedropper, select that color. And you could turn down the opacity a little bit if you want. I'll go down just a little bit. But then what I'll do is I'll do a blur on this too. I'll try to blur this a lot. And that's an effect down here. I'll click on plus and I'll choose blur. And this blur I'm probably going to do a lot. Do a big blur on it. And then it kind of blends in a little more, like 26. As long as it doesn't blur outside there. And that's not too bad. Again, you don't want it blurring so you see it outside the lines. But uh, that looks pretty good. I'll shorten this just a little. That doesn't look too bad uh, for a artificial bottle so far. And I'll call this ellipse glow. I'll call it... Uh, bottle glow and we're doing okay we just have the foil to do up here then we're gonna do the bottom part and then we'll just put some highlights on here and some of these we can even turn down the opacity and blur them a little bit so they look more realistic there's one here there's one here and there's one over there so I think we're doing okay uh, maybe I'll shorten this just just a little bit to get a little more that black color in there not perfect but it's pretty good once we get everything on there we put a label it'll look nice maybe I'll Pull this down just a little bit. Uh, you could always reshape this and make it more of where it's wider and thinner at the bottom or whatever you want to do, but I think that's okay right now. So I'm going to take a break here and we'll, we'll continue the foil part and the highlights and this bottom part in part two, but that's part one of 11 Wine Bottle and we're starting this in Figma. And even if we continue this in Illustrator, we'll be able to save this out as an SVG, Scalable Vector Graphic, and bring it into Illustrator and do anything more that we need to do if we want to work on it in Illustrator. So that's part one. Sit tight for part two.